When we imagine an archetypal desert landscape, with its relentless sun, rippling sand and hidden oases, we often picture the Sahara. But 11,000 years ago, what we know today as the world's largest hot desert would have been unrecognizable. The now desiccated northern strip of Africa was once green and alive, pocked with lakes, rivers, grasslands, and even forests. This has been proven by discovered ancient paintings and drawings of people who occupied the Sahara many years ago. So where did all that water go? Can the desert be green with technology? Well, our video today will look into answering this question, as recent research suggests solar panels and wind turbines holds the secret to greening the desert. Before we go any further with our video, here are some few words from Mizizi, the official sponsor of our video today. Mizizi meaning roots in Swahili is the official streetwear brand celebrating the African diaspora. They currently sell sports jerseys representing black cultures from all across the world, which includes African, the Caribbean, and Latin American countries. They also have partnership with Marvel, Disney, and Viacom, and released official jerseys for Black Panther, The Lion King, and Coming to America. If you are interested in stylish high-end black-owned brand, visit mezzazashop.com and check out their products. Links to Mizizi can be found in the video description below. In recent years, African nations have been urged to dive into green energy in response to a global vision to attenuate carbon emissions. Countries in the Sahara, such as Morocco, Egypt, and Algeria have embraced a cause impressively creating blueprints that employ renewables in a way to meet national energy demand while putting in place plans for projects to supply millions of European households. Among the countries in North Africa, Morocco in particular appears to be resonated with the concept, pursuing projects as grandiose as the resourceful more power plants. This colossal structure is the world's largest concentrated solar power plant envisioned to generate ample energy to power over 400,000 Moroccan households, with ambitions to satisfy over 1.1 million people in the future, even as it has curtailed approximately 690,000 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent per year since its inception in 2016. Another notable project worthy of mention is the Tarfea Wind Farm in Morocco, which is one of Africa's largest capacity wind farm with 131 wind turbines that help to power 1.5 million households and offsets 900 tons of CO2 emissions per year, a task that would naturally require 150 million trees each year. Other nations are jumping in on the trend in a bid to mitigate dependencies on fossil fuels, which alter the climate. Large-scale renewables are being engaged across the Middle East, North Africa, and Saudi Arabia, which has demonstrated its commitment to a $200 billion investment in solar power. These strategic initiatives have compelled researchers to investigate the possibility of transforming the world's largest and hottest desert into an enormous renewable farm sprawled with vast solar and wind installations, capable of delivering four times the current global energy demand. The Sahara occupies approximately one-third of the African continent and is nearly the size of the United States, is among the world's extremely harsh ecosystems, encompassing 3.6 million square miles and constituting one of the world's driest climates. It is also known to abound in resources such as wind energy due to the activities of the Atlantic trade winds, which extends far inland into the Sahara Desert, forcing high annual wind output and energy from the sun which is a bountiful resource enjoyed by the Sahara by virtue of its position and nature as the hottest desert in the world. This blazing panorama of heat and lethal dryness, encompassing 10 countries, is flooded with silicon-rich sand and is expanding at an astonishing rate. These traits of the Sahara complement renewable energy configurations within the region, particularly solar panels and wind turbines, which will be required to reduce carbon emissions from fossil fuels to avoid catastrophic climate change. New studies have indicated in recent times that these major wind and solar modifications within the Sahara have the potential to convert large parcels of the arid landscape into green foliage. Once fully functional, 
These structures could alter the local environment with their operations and consequently bring rain to the desert and help to improve the ambience in some of the world's most uninhabitable places. Can renewables bring rain back to the Sahara Desert? Researchers have been concerned about the environmental impact of the popular energy niches that have become more prevalent. With the effects of global warming already visible in the Sahara, where an expanding desert land is gradually engulfing its bordering fertile lands, there are concerns about potential imminent changes to covering the ground with solar panels and filling the sky with turbine blades. Following the publication of a study in the journal Science that confirms the feasibility of wind and solar farms in the Sahara Desert to induce rain and plant growth, other scientists have been eager to investigate the validity of the claim. To evaluate these theories, a team of researchers used the Sahara Desert as a study site for its history due to its role as a host of large renewable plants in the past. They conceptualized the desert to be covered substantially with wind turbines and solar panels, replicating the effects of 79 terawatts of solar panels and 3 terawatts of wind turbines. These figures may appear exaggerated in today's context, but they are not entirely implausible in the distant future as the total amount of solar power added by all nations in 2017 was slightly less than a tenth of a terawatt. Findings from the study revealed that the installation of multitudes of solar panels and wind turbines would invariably warm up the surrounding atmosphere in response to the pirouetting wind turbines in the air and solar panels absorbing more sunlight. The ground temperature gradually rises due to the churning turbines in the air, while wind speeds slow, allowing rain to form. With all factors considered, these simulations unveil the Sahara could receive twice as much rain with those renewable installations as it does now, which is relatively negligible on average. However, their concentrations on specific areas could result in up to 20 inches more rain per year. This represents a largely significant change with far-reaching ecological implications. There have been other models to test the claims, such as one developed by lead researcher Dr. Yan Lee of the University of Illinois in the United States, which show a doubled increase in precipitation for large-scale solar and wind farms in the Sahara, with magnitudes ranging from 20 mm to 500 mm per year. This is almost certain to increase the fraction of vegetation cover by about 20%. According to the study, average rainfall increased by 1.12 mm per day in the Sahel, a semi-arid region south of the Sahara with wind farms. Wind turbines mix warm air from above through its swiveling blades, resulting in increased evaporation, precipitation, and plant growth. Wind farms, according to Dr. Lee, increase surface roughness, which simultaneously increase wind convergence into low-pressure areas, causing intersecting air to rise, cool, and condense as rain. Solar panels work a little differently, in that, while their black surfaces absorb a majority of the sunlight that strikes them, only a small portion, roughly 15% of the incoming energy, is converted to electricity. The bulk is released into the environment as heat, the darker nature of the panels in comparison to the cover surfaces forces a large region of solar cells to absorb excess energy, which is then emitted as heat, thereby influencing the climate. Experts estimate that if one-fifth of the Sahara Desert was used for solar and wind farms, it would generate about 5 centimeters more rain per year in the south of the Sahara. That may not sound like much but it could increase the region's plant cover by 20% and boost agriculture enormously, a win-win for people and the environment. According to Safa Mote, a physicist at the University of Maryland, who also co-researched how climate model shows large-scale wind and solar farms in the Sahara increase rain and vegetation, a solar and wind farm of that size could produce four times as much electricity in a single year as is consumed worldwide today that could help African countries become more sustainable. If there is the political will to get behind the project, 
the physicist is convinced that the gigantic implementation costs of an estimated $20 trillion would be manageable. These assumptions are based on the massive scale of installations required to significantly reduce global fossil energy demands, which would span thousands of square kilometers, especially given that their effects would be insignificant if localized in a sparsely populated and barren desert. In simpler terms, once installed on a large enough scale, capable of producing enough energy to meet global demand, both wind and solar infrastructure would trigger feedback loops necessary to induce ample rainfall and remodel one of the planet's most hostile environments into a habitable oasis. Doesn't that sound ideal? Can deserts be greened? With forests and grasslands burning all over the world, the importance of forests as carbon sinks has been highlighted. As evidenced by a string of recent awards, China has emerged as the undisputed leader in the successful greening of degraded grasslands and deserts. China's government took a stand against desertification caused by centuries of overgrazing and deforestation as early as the 1970s. In 1998, it launched its first national unified approach, Grain for Green, to encourage local herders and farmers to convert cultivated or barren land on steep slopes into grassland and forests. Since then, the Chinese government has included expanding and restoring forest and grassland coverage as carbon sinks in China's nationally determined contributions to the Paris Agreement. According to a report released by the Chinese Academy of Sciences, more than 7.88 million hectares of windbreak trees have been planted, 336,200 square kilometers of desertification have been reversed, and more than 10 million hectares of grasslands have been protected or restored over the last four decades. A good example of China's success in greening a desert is the QBP Desert Greening Project, which began 30 years ago. The project known to be the world's most successful land reclamation project has succeeded in not only reigning in the relentless growth of the seventh largest desert in China, roughly the size of Kuwait, it has also turned about 6,000 square kilometers of the desert, one-third of it green. Situated about 800 kilometers to the west of Beijing in the Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region, the greening efforts have also controlled desertification in the rest of the area. The project can be looked to as a good example of how the theory being discussed by scientists really works, as QBP Desert Greening Project has also installed several solar panels, and these have shown positive effect of restoring the desert vegetation. Impacts of Greening the Sahara on People According to the researchers, these findings will mostly produce a positive impact. Further studies have predicted significant improvements in rain-fed agriculture within the region, which would encourage vegetation and could be critical for increased livestock production. Furthermore, even as the Sahara, the Sahel, and the Middle East are some of the world's driest regions, their populations are rapidly increasing, as is poverty. The viability of these projects will address the region's interconnected sustainability challenges in the energy-water-food nexus. future outlook. Ultimately, a massive wind and solar project in the Sahara Desert would help to improve precipitation and vegetation in the world's largest scorching desert. Scholars such as Dr. Lee believe policymakers and investors should pursue these solar and wind farms modifications, which have tremendous tendencies to provide burgeoning benefits to people, society, and the environment. It is possible to revive degraded soils and vegetation and to restore disrupted water cycles, be it with nature-based methods or using high-tech strategies. But the costs and effort involved are too high to transform all the Sahara's desertified areas back into healthy soils. Also, other expects are skeptical and believe solar panels and wind turbines may have minimal impact on global climate change. They advocate the only way to prevent fertile soils from drying out and deserts from spreading is to stop the relentless exploitation of soils and overuse of finite water sources. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to watch also the next video showing on your screen, which presents the 10 most impressive ongoing renewable energy projects in Africa. 
As always, make sure to give our video a like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting topics about trends and development in Africa.